Hi, my name's Phil, I like talking about politics, and in this video I'd like to discuss how the Conservatives are shaming us yet again during what may be the greatest humanitarian crisis on our continent since Kosovo. Even before now, natural Conservatives were already ashamed of this government. We saw that in elections last year. But Boris Johnson and his populist cronies have demonstrated yet again that there are always further depths they can sink to, to the embarrassment of the entire nation. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So uh, patriotism can be a funny thing at times, can't it? It's common for governments to want to instill pride for your country into your heart. Patriotism can be both positive and negative. It can help instill a feeling of togetherness or it can be used to blind people to their own misgivings, which, if acknowledged, would actually be swept away in the spirit of national improvement. Who was it who said now, patriotism is the last refuge of the scoundrel? I forget. Someone will tell me. And patriotism is helping Ukrainians defend their home against a vastly superior military force, albeit one that has been exposed with its ageing Soviet-era junk, it appears that the plan was for Ukraine to fall quickly. This has not yet happened, at least not the time of recording this. This Stalingrad level of defence, which the Russians have bafflingly failed to consider, is the positive side of patriotism. But our current Conservative government do not instil a sense of patriotism at all, whether for positive or negative reasons. Not for the first time, I am ashamed. Ukraine is resisting a full-scale invasion in an impressive display of tenacity. Ukraine's president has not fled the country. In order to coordinate the resistance remotely, he is on the streets with his people, defending. Now, I'm not going to say that this is the right decision, but I am going to say that it might just be the single most heroic thing I have heard of without needing to reference a history book. But many people are fleeing. They must. Countries surrounding Ukraine have told them to come in. Don't worry about your papers. Just get yourselves here to safety. There's food, there's drink, there's shelter. Countries further afield are also taking in lots of refugees. Denmark has said they'll take in a load. Ireland is waiving visas altogether. What is my government doing? Are they waiving the visas? No. Yesterday, the Home Office waved the Ukrainian flag. OK. What else are you doing? Anything else? Are we helping Ukrainian refugees get to safety? No, the opposite. We've just made it even more difficult for refugees to get to safety. The Home Office is saying that Ukrainians can apply to come to the UK via their marvellous points-based immigration system. You what, mate? These people are fleeing war, not trying to get a job in the NHS. For which, by the way, this marvellous points-based immigration system would still be a bit of a barrier. This is the most obscene act over this crisis yet. We're effectively making it difficult for civilians to flee rockets and tanks. I don't mean we haven't stepped up our humanitarian efforts. I mean we've actively made it harder for these people to escape the invasion of their country by a regime that our government have been thoroughly implicated in actively supporting for years in return for filthy lucre. Bear in mind that Ukraine was invaded eight years ago. Parts of it have been occupied by Russia ever since. This invasion is not a new invasion, it's just a massive escalation of one that has been ongoing for nearly a decade. So we already had requests for asylum from Ukrainians. In all that time, in eight years, we've allowed 30 to be granted. Now compare this with the in excess of 1,000 wealthy Russians with close connections to Putin who have been granted visas the so-called golden visas issued by the Conservative government to the wealthy for no other reason than they are wealthy and willing to dump money in London. None of that points-based bollocks for them. Reason for wanting to stay in the UK. I'm rich. In you come, son. It is shameful. I am thoroughly ashamed of the fact that poorer countries who are very close to Russia's border, if not right on it, are taking a stronger stand against Putin's aggression than we are. They have not thought twice about helping in any way they can. Putin has threatened them. They don't care. Our immediate neighbour, Ireland, is also shaming us. It's not just that they're willing to issue visas quickly and easily. Like I said, they're not even messing about with that. If you can come here, we will shelter you. That is their response. What is our response? Do you have enough points? 
And even if they do have enough points, and this is what I mean about making it more difficult, we've closed off the ability to submit claims. A Conservative MP who was disgruntled at the accusation that the government was stopping Ukrainians apply for visa said, no, we haven't stopped them applying at all. We've just closed down the place that accepts them. As if that's all perfectly reasonable. Oh, even Kiev's under siege, you know, we had to close down the offices. If the emergency is severe enough that your offices have to close, it's serious enough that we should just be accepting refugees and worry about the details later once they're safe. There was a moment in the past few days where I actually thought we were going to open our doors. I thought we were going to display an obscene juxtaposition to accept refugees from a European country riven by war, even as we try and drown refugees fleeing war elsewhere. But no, we've been just as immoral to those in our own European family. And isn't it the Conservatives that always bang on about the Blitz spirit in Dunkirk? Well, Ukraine is going through the Blitz. Where is our remake of Dunkirk? Why are we not going the extra mile to help those trying to escape rather than putting extra barriers in their way? The very people who talk with misty eyes about the heroism of our compatriots in the 1940s are ensuring that future generations of Britons look back on this period with the deepest shame. Even when it comes to sanctions, our government is treating us like fools. Putin has not just launched a full-scale invasion of Ukraine, he has threatened other countries, including Finland and Sweden with invasion. Now, I do not know if he is insane or just behaving this way out of desperation because his strategy is not currently working. I don't know. But such actions must be met with the strongest sanctions. Yes, the UK is not alone in being weak with economic action, but we are coming up with the crappiest excuses. Do you know what the latest one is? The government are now claiming that they're struggling to apply more sanctions because the oligarchs' lawyers are delaying the process. There are three things to say about this. First, I have seen no reports of other governments blaming lawyers for their lack of sanctions. How come it's only us having this trouble? Is it because we've stuffed our government with legal nitwits who are making a mess of the process? Or are they just making excuses? Secondly, I have seen legal experts say that it is utterly ridiculous. If the government wants to apply sanctions, there is no legal recourse in this case. Third, it's also been suggested that if there were a particular legal issue in the UK, it could easily be resolved by Parliament. Do you remember back in 2019? I remember back in 2019. Parliament sat over the weekend to push through a law to force Boris Johnson to comply with their wishes to seek an extension to the Article 50 process rather than leave automatically without a deal. Boris Johnson looked like he was trying to take us out of the EU without a deal. Parliament, over the weekend, sat to force through a law to stop him doing that. Well, guess what? Parliament still has the power to sit at the weekend and push through legislation in quick time to deal with an emergency. The whole of Europe is watching this. The world to some degree, but this is keenest felt in Europe, of course. Many people will be wondering why their government may not be doing more. Some governments are genuinely doing all they can. But I do not think there are any people anywhere else in Europe, if you do not count Russia, that is more ashamed of their government than we in the UK right now. I cannot even see evidence of the normally Tory and Johnson supporting press trying to put lipstick on this pig. Gone are the headlines trumpeting Johnson's strong rhetoric now that the invasion is underway and we've shown our indifference. The front pages carry images of Ukraine's leaders, including President Zelensky, who's actually on the streets defending his country. Would Boris Johnson do that? No, we know he wouldn't. A couple of years ago, he fled the country from floods, for goodness sake, let alone armed invasion. Now, the, the papers can't put Boris Johnson on the front because they've got nothing to discuss of our action, nothing to say, because he's got nothing to do. The best they can do, like the Daily Mail yesterday, is point out that the EU aren't doing enough. That's what their front page, oh, the EU haven't done enough. They, the Russian oligarchs can still buy handbags from Italy. They've still done far more than we have done. That's the best that they have. That someone else that's doing more than us, but they could still do a little bit better. Shameful. Shameful. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.